Okay, perfect. Rayon Lawrence, I'm happy to have you to talk about, um, you know, season two of BMF, talk about your story, talk about your journey. You know, we've actually featured you last year when we talked about season one. And, you know, I just had to get you back on here because your role's expanding and you are becoming a, a, a crowd favorite. And, you know, that's sometimes hard to do when you got this show full of talented dramatic dynamic individuals so that's just a testament to your ability to stand out in front of a crowd of also excellent people so just to give you your roses before we start i appreciate that thank you thank you for having me again no my pleasure so about k9 you know let's let's just get some backstory from where we were where we were left off in season one and now where we're going in season two with him okay so you know season one you know i come up to meet you and i say hey listen i see y'all doing y'all thing but you know, you really want to get into something, just come see me in the Bruces. And, you know, this season, he comes to the Bruces. Yeah. You see how grimy it is. You know, Terry told him back in episode, uh, episode four, season one, hey, the Bruces is grimy, man. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> this season, you see why we're coming to the Bruces is a little grimy. So, you know, we're going to see if Meech is ready for it as you see throughout the season. Nice. I love it. What attracted you to this show and that role? Um, you know, growing up, you know, hearing about BMF and, you know, they out there, you know, with the big chain spending that money, you know, dropping thousands over at the club and stuff like that. So that was intriguing. Like, man, you know what I mean? Cause I'm the type of dude when I'm, I ain't be spending thousands and thousands like they do, but I like to hook my people up, you know what I mean? When I'm out there. So I'm all about unity, all about family. So uh, that's what intrigued me about them. You know, me and my, you know, I don't got platinum like them, but you know, my white gold and stuff like that. You know, I, I got that from, you know, the culture that they brought uh, back in the South. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it attracted me to BMF in general. And I love black, you know what I'm saying? I love white. So, you know, to be able to put those colors together is always a good thing. So now it attracted me to this specific role, canine. So at first, when I got it, I didn't know how big the role was, right? So it just said possibly recurring. So to be on BMF, I was just excited to be on it. Um, So it said possibly recurring. So you know, once I get there and I'm, I'm like, all right, well, damn, I only got this one scene. <laughs> so I'm kind of, you know, I've been in the game for a minute. So I'm a little tight. I'm happy that I'm there, right? You're happy to be there. But at the same time, as an artist, you want to be able to really, really do your thing and, and, and see what you can do. Not in just that one scene. You can't really see much. So I'm happy that uh, Randy and 50 Cent, you know, gave me the opportunity to come back, you know, for season two. Because they could have easily gave this to a name. Yeah. Right. So they gave me as an up and coming artist uh, the opportunity to really, you know, put put this character on showcase for the second season. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm loving it. I mean, we me and the character canine, you know, the real person dog got a lot of similarities. You know, we don't like to be disrespected. We love <laughs> we love jewelry. You know what I mean? And we love family and loyalty. So we love basketball. So that's the similarities I had with canine. So you know, to be able to put that on display was was an awesome opportunity for me. Nice. I love that. And you know, you being from New York and it all taking place in like Detroit, different things. Do you do you feel like there's that similarity? Do you feel like you actually can say I've not maybe grew up in this type of environment, but I've been close enough to it and I've experienced other people that were kind of a part of that life? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, yeah, growing up in New York, we already knew, you know, the murder capital of the world was Detroit <laughs> back then. You know what I mean? You're growing, I'm growing up in Flatbush, Brooklyn, right? Lenox. So I'm I'm able to see this stuff and be around some of this stuff. So uh, to be able to come and play this, I was like, all right, well, I've been around this life a little bit. So I can maybe bring some of that, uh, some of that knowledge uh, to this character and also dress the dressing right you know dressing in gucci or or dressing in some fly adidas and stuff like that you know be able to put that on you know the stuff that we kind of wear today or what we wore back in what the 90s and they was wearing this back in the 80s when it first kicked off you know yeah. what i'm saying to be able to do that as well was awesome you know what i mean Nice. I love that. And you're on a show that's right there with like New Jack City, Belly, you know, Snowfall. How does that feel to be in that type of genre? Because we all don't get that opportunity, you know what I mean? And to get to play something that's a, a part of our history, but not something that's played out, you know, because sometimes when we have all these different, like, let's say, slave movies are different in those time pieces, you know, the communities like <clears throat> another one of those. But it's something about these movies when it's this like drug mafia thing, the community is always addicted to. Why do you think that is as well? Well, we can even take it back to uh, what you say, like underground, right? When I did underground before, 
what attracted me when I did Underground was uh, the music that John Legend was able to bring. So I was able to, it was able to bring what was going on back in the slavery. We was able to kind of, in a sense, I won't say um, take it all in, but it was, it was just, I don't know, it was just a different feel of when I did Underground and, and the music that brought me to maybe wanting to be a part of this and playing an abolitionist, mm -hmm. you know, was, was something that excited me on this project versus doing, let's say, a project like Roots, which was by the same producers, it was a little bit different by the music that John Ledger brought. So everybody was, everybody was able to kind of, in a sense, watch this because of the music as well. You mm -hmm. know, he was able to kind of take it all in and kind of learn yeah. from the history that we brought in underground, right? So now we go to BMF, right? So BMF now being in the, in, in the talks of, like you say, New Jack City or or what a menace to society or boys in the hood or something like that. So it's awesome for us to be talked like that because BMF like set the culture, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Back in, in uh what, 2000s, late nineties. So they was able to set the culture. And I always tell people, we don't want to glorify um the, the drug business, but that's kind of what they had to go to because they was having a hard time. You know, his parents were having a hard time, you know, maintaining the bills. So when they got to doing drugs, they kind of legitimized it by getting in the music game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would tell people that uh, whenever you're striving for something, put your all into it. So they put their all into the drug game and now look at the other end. Now they got a, a, a show about them, right? You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, they like I said, they were in the music game. So this is stuff they, they were able to do. And for us to be popular um you know amongst the the new jack city man it's, it, it's just amazing feeling when you go out and, and i wear the jacket yeah I'm <laughs> discounts and stuff you know what i'm saying people are like, oh you're on the show people want to take pictures like it, yeah. it, it's amazing man it's, it's amazing and and people just adapt to it just so now that we're talking about um you know how it feels to be in this type of genre and everything compare how was it for your journey to actually get this role and get on the show i know it's pretty interesting yeah. So the, the, the journey from it was, um, it, it was funny because when I initially got the audition, I ended up doing this audition 2am, you know, I was on my way to Hawaii to film Magnum PI. So I was yeah. able to put this audition on tape, you know, at 2am, you know, oh, so wow. I put it on tape and my flight is at 6am to, to go to Hawaii. So I was able to put it on tape, find out, I think, couple months later you know actually once i was done filming magnum pi a couple a little bit of week, weeks after that i found out that i booked it and man the excitement you know to be able to also work with tasha smith so i never worked with tasha smith i worked with her sister citra smith so i was able to work with her and now um once i came back for season two i guess they didn't see much in that one scene that i had right so for season two all they did was just look at my reel and from what Randy told me, it was like, oh, he he can do this. So oh, wow. if I didn't have my reel together, I probably would have had to audition or they would have went with a name probably. You just never know, right? So I had my tools already ready. And then, yes, they gave me this opportunity. And, man, I mean, just just from breaking it down with my coach, Sheik from Sheik Studios, uh, once once we saw how heavy it was going to be second season, we was able to break it down, do a lot of rehearsing. You know, I'm listening to DMX every day. You know what I mean? And that was able to get me into the mindset because what DMX was rapping about, you know, K9 was doing this stuff, doing this yeah. stuff before, you know, before DMX was out. So yeah, so that that's how it all came together. And then also to meet his family. You know, his family wow. all came to see me in Detroit. Oh wow. And I sat down, we had dinner, and you know, they were just telling me the stories. I was like, man, listen, I signed the NDA, so I can't say nothing. <laughs> to you. you can tell me, but you know, I can't say nothing back to you. So, you know, the, the stuff that they were telling telling me, I was like, man, this is along the lines of what's going on here. And yeah. it, it was just crazy. And for them, all they embraced me, you know, even uh, K9's brother, KK, you know what I'm saying? And he FaceTimed me, you know, and he was, you know, with Dog back in the days, yeah. you know what I mean? And for him to give me that vote of confidence was was just amazing. So just from day one, everything was 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 really synced in. You know, Jeez. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. Um, is there any part of you that you put into this role? You know how uh, for actors, there's always this thing. You guys first have to try to empathize with this person, right? You have to find. Mm -hmm. And I think we can always empathize with someone wanting better for their family. Now, moralistically, ethically, we might say, OK, I'm not going to do this, but I get why you want to do better. Right. But 
there a part of you that you put into the character when you're reading the line or when you're in a situation you're like but i might actually handle it this way so let me tweak it a little bit yeah yeah. well i i, I try to i always whenever i study and do a character i always try to be a true to the character so exactly how he was that's just the mentality i'm gonna have you know what i'm saying and like i said the similarities we have that's how I was able to kind of sink into him, right? So when it comes to disrespect, I don't, I don't take disrespect. I'm not gonna go to level canine goes. <laughs> but my mentality is like, hey, you know how we be having what we be thinking, but we're yeah. not gonna do it, right? Yeah. Sometimes my mental be on some next stuff, but I can't do it because you know what's next. You go into the panel, you might end up dead. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that and I love to dress up, right? I I, you know, I, my people that know me, I love to be Gucci'd out. Yeah, he not as Gucci out in this. So you know the big chains. You know I like to walk around with my chains and stuff like that. So a lot of these similarities I've had with K9. So it was easier for me to sink in with with that. You know, even playing basketball, being a coach. You know, I never really been a coach on the sidelines, but I know how to play basketball at a high level. So I was able to even bring that you know to the character as well. So those similarities I was I had was in depth of what K9 was about. So it was easy for me to kind of connect that to, to, to him. Nice. I love that. Now that we talked about season two, we talked about K9, we talked about how you got it. We got there, right? How has your journey been? Where did this part of acting come from, from New York? You know, this, this in the boroughs, you know, we all, if we're not from there, I, I swear we all say like use boroughs and, and bodega, like y'all just say that every day, right? I swear <laughs> everybody outside of that part of the country. Yeah. So, so let me know. I always like to be like a Marvel comic, right? What's your origin story and where does the love for this craft come from? <clears throat> so you know, when I was younger, um, people used to say, hey, you know, you got to look, you, you should get into modeling. So at one point I, you know, took some pictures at King's Plaza in Brooklyn. I, was like, I, I ain't got nothing to do. I'm just in school. You know, I had a part-time job. I think I might even resign from the part-time job I had. And I was like, let me go take these pictures and see what's up. <laughs> Looked in the newspaper and they was looking for models and actors. I said, All right, let me try it out. Brought my pictures up to them. And they was like, yeah, we, you know, we want to work with you. Okay. So um, I pay. I even paid to join. You're not supposed to pay to join anything, but I was I'll like, say, isn't that a hundred dollars? I'll, I'll do it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my very first audition was an ESPN commercial, okay. and I'm like, you know, I'm in my mind. I'm like, oh, this acting thing about to be easy. So mm -hmm. I started to do both uh, modeling and acting, and I saw how boring modeling is. Is you just there for hours and just taking pictures and doing different poses? It was boring, mm -hmm. and uh, just as an actor you know, developing, you know, uh, these characters, you know, every day you, you rehearsing with somebody or, you know, you rehearsing by yourself and just be able to put different things together. Cause I love to investigate, you know, I got my degree in criminal justice, so I want to be FBI agent. So for me to seek out information about a character that I'm developing, you know what I mean? It, it, it is, it's very intriguing to me. So mm -hmm. that's what interests me more to continue and keep pursuing, uh, this part of, you know, of the career I want to go and I'm like, all right, modeling, I'll, I'll do it here and there. If I have to do it, I'll do it. But yeah. acting is, is, is what's it. And, you know, I wanted to also, maybe if I was good enough, be an NBA, right. Being an NFL. So I could play these characters, you know, as an actor, you know, I could go out there and play a professional NFL player, a professional basketball player, a player, FBI agent, all this stuff I could do as an actor. You can create all these different characters as you, as you go along this journey. So that's what intrigued me about continuing this career path. Nice. I love that. And you have been in different roles, right? They talk about the actor having six degrees of like, you know, you can go all the way from, you know, football coach dad to lawyer, right? Based off of your look, based off of your, um, you know, what you bring to set. So how have you been able to navigate this? Because you've been in the game since around like 2006, 2008, correct? Yeah, yeah, I've been in the game for, I ain't, I ain't gonna give y'all a date, but I've been in the game. I'm not aiding you right now. Look, you start, black you start pulling up my roller decks. You start to be like, yeah, this boy been out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, you been know. For a while, I didn't have to go all the way back to when I graduated high school, huh? <laughs> right? Yo, so, you know what's funny is something came out yesterday. Um, I think it's called Hip Hop Wolf or something like that. So people were able to see me in Jay-Z 99 Problems video. So people was like, yo, bro, that's yours. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this was just yesterday. So people hit me up. Yo, I didn't know you was in it. I said, bro, I've been in the game for a minute, man. So um, yeah, so I was able to play, as we talked about earlier, Abolitionists on Underground. 
Uh, I was able to play a cop on FBI, Blue Bloods. Uh, so flipping into that and some indie films you play in like the guy next door. So I was able to fortunately I'll be able to play all these uh, different type of characters, you know, in, in, in this business. So, you know, um, and I thank that to just paying attention to just other people's lives. Right. So, you know, um, their lives or me rehearsing and, and stuff like that. I was able to kind of learn and watch people and see what people do on a daily basis when I have a conversation with people listen you know exactly what they're saying paying attention and yeah that's pretty much this how i was able to adapt to some of these characters and sometimes you can get stuff from watching reality shows so let's say you know one of the popular shows back in the days was cops you know yeah. so really watching like what cops do so okay this is this is reality and then when you're doing a character but okay maybe i saw something like that on cops yeah that's what they do, you know. Um, and you know, watching the cops on a daily basis eat their donuts or <laughs> when they sit and staking out people, and you you just kind of you know, watch that and watch how lawyers are when they're in the courtroom and watch how teachers are, you right? Growing up, you know, you in you in high school or in college watching how professors are and you take all that in and then whenever you do these characters, you bring that, you remember, and that's what you call sense of memory. I mostly like to use method acting which method acting is being in the moment, but you also use your sense memory and things that you've experienced. You'd be able to watch that and pay attention to that and be able to put it to the character. Nice. I love to hear that. We have 10 minutes left. I always like to be conscious of our time. They always know I was on the 10 minute mark. Um, you know, when it comes to your career, how have you been able to sustain yourself so long without giving up? Because you've been in the game for a while and it's not easy, you know, and and mind you, when you're saying being in 99 problems, it's like, you know, when you're doing this extra, you were there before you could get a million followers and someone wants to put you in a thing because they're like, OK, well, his followers are going to make them watch this show. You know, you have to be at the grind where you're just like, I don't even know if I'm going to give me screen time. I'm not getting paid for some of this. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. <laughs> see so it's it's a matter of just you know staying you know I always use the model trust the process right so no matter what you're going through in the business you know just keep striving and keep you know doing your research and doing your networking and and you know putting God's first right so praying on it you know and I always pray for purpose you know versus praying about oh I want to get this role if it's a part of my purpose then I accept it if it's not a part of my purpose then you know, I don't, I don't, I don't need to accept it. Right. So, um, yeah. And then your friends, you know, the people that's next to you, those people are going to, you know, keep you humble and keep you confident. You know, um, I had times in my career where like, it was like, man, like really like, you know, sometimes you get really disappointed and having those people next to you just give you that little kick, like, bro, come on, bro. You, you can get past this. And I think I think that helps. And even having fans, and that's why I make it a conscious effort to talk to my fans on social media. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give them everybody my number, but social media, <laughs> I'll respond to a DM yeah. or something like that because that excites them, right? And that excites me, right? That somebody's watching my work. When somebody be like, oh, I saw you in this movie, what, maybe 10 years ago. I'm like, oh, wow, you saw that movie? So yeah. people have been watching your career for, for a long time. And you know, um, I remember one time I auditioned, I ain't gonna say the show, I did for a show, uh, Serious Ruggler on NBC. And, uh, you know, um, I, I guess I didn't take the direction as good from the casting director. And I was just a little bit down. I was like, man, I've been in the game for a minute. How would I not take direction? And I went home and just saw a, a bunch of my old independent movies. And I just started watching them and seeing where I came from. And that kind of gave me the confidence to be like, bro, you, you've been climbing the steps, man. You know, this is just a little hurdle that you can go over. So the, that all that stuff to me, um, you know, keeps, keeps me going and knowing that I'm going to make it. That's always in the back of my head is I know I'm going to be one of those people that's going to make it to the top, no matter how long it takes, you know, I've just got to keep strategizing, right? You get, maybe you have to change a different strategy every day, but, you know, keep thinking of a way to, to make it to where you want to go and have the confidence. Nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, you know, a couple more questions before we're done. When it comes to your trajectory as an actor, um, you know, what else is coming up for you and how are you able to place yourself in these positions where, you know, now you're at a place where it's like, you know, 
bigger projects, bigger um, networks, bigger, you know, production, bigger budgets, which is always great for a working actor because, you know, oh, yeah. hey, when you're not working, you're really not working. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, you know, business is hard, but to stay on top, you know, I think what it is, is, you know, continuing to networking, right? So, and and still continue to to hustle. So now that I'm on this show as a pop- popular show, probably my biggest role is getting my team together, right? You know, having everybody, my agent, manager, my PR together. Hey, we need to get the next job, you know? So if there's, right now it's pilot season, okay? So it's pilot season. Let's see what's out there for my type, you know, my type, you know? Let's, let's see if we can have a meeting, you know? If somebody that's on, let's say my agent is rep- representing somebody that's on a project already. Okay, can we attach me to that? So yeah. a lot of those things, you know, um, you want to you want to look into and just continue to stay on the grind and still continue to have that conversation with your team about hey we need to keep going up here we don't want to stay here right now that we have the show we don't want to be complacent but we want to keep moving and that's a, just a matter of just communicating you know and I got a project coming out where I'm playing the lead it's a film called First Come Love Then Comes Murder that's a TV one movie awesome. so that will be next after um, BMF and. You know, I want to continue to play leading male roles and, uh, you know, next, maybe a series regular on the show. So if a show out there trying to yeah. book me as a series <laughs> regular, let's talk. <laughs> nice. I love that. And before we go, last question, what advice would you give anyone that's, you know, in this industry that's been in there, like, you know, as long as you've been or just, just getting started and that it's changed so much, you know what I mean? People think like they need to have social media personalities to get on things, but sometimes they forget to, well, you should actually do that, but also get your craft together, you know? So what advice would you give to somebody? It's just, it's just too much stimuli out there, right? You're seeing everybody climb, you're seeing this, you're seeing that to like, how can they stay in the game? You could, you can, it, you know, it's, it's no spe- specific way, but it's really about keeping your ears and eyes open, right? It's, you know, the, the, the networking, right? So a lot of times, a lot of people that kind of, you know, get put on, we see as social media influences, right? So people think, oh, I need to go out there and do, you know, a comedy video to get myself out there, you know? So sometimes, you know, People would do that and maybe not make make it anywhere. That maybe wasn't their niche. So that was one of the things I was thinking about. I was like, man, I kind of need to get my social media up there. And uh, so I thought about doing those things, but it just wasn't me. You yeah. know, so I stuck with my plan and just strategize, you know. So if I if I keep my ears to the streets, you know, there's IMDB Pro that people can get and you can find out what casting directors are casting. So if you're watching these movies, that have your type, you know, look up who's the casting director and try to reach out to them, right? You have, you know, Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you got all different types of ways to reach out to them. So, you know, those kind of stuff and making friends in the business, right? So you may have a friend that's getting a lot of these auditions and y'all might be the same type. Yo, you know, who's the casting director? Maybe I can send my stuff directly to them. Maybe you don't have a representation, they do, right? So you try to send your stuff and maybe you can get a recommendation to that person's agent or that person's manager. So I would say always keep, in connect, keep connected and just strategizing, you know, the different tools that you have. And if there's an audition that I find out, like let's Actors Access is one of the bigger audition sites. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, there's a role in there. I'm like, I'm going to look up that cast and director and I'm going to probably shoot my shot on, on, on a DM on Instagram, right? I have my tools ready. I got my headshot. I got my... um. I got my reel together and I got my IMDb credits. I'll send it to them. And if it's an email, for example, I'll have a catchy subject, you know, something that they may want to open up. <laughs> Maybe you want to open up this email, right? No. You know, so like, um, I, you know, like, let's say, for example, right, let's say somebody was on BMF and maybe had one line or, or something like that. So maybe in your subject line, you put, you know, uh, BMF, you know, the heavy feature on BMF, something like that. The person might open it because it's one of the hot shows out. So you just got to keep thinking about strategic ways to um, get yourself in front of people and not losing yourself doing it at the same time. Because sometimes we do lose ourselves, right? Maybe me doing those comedic videos on Instagram that a lot of influencers do, I would have lost myself doing something I really didn't want to do, but I was trying to get out there because a lot of times to get a lot of these roles now, people look at your social media following. And that necessarily won't, you won't say anything, but people think that, oh, this person has 
a hundred thousand followers or this person have a million followers that they're going to have these people that come and watch them. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, those could be followers that was bought. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I would always say whatever you feel inside you're doing and you're still being you continue to do that and just find strategic ways to get yourself to where you want to go. Nice. That's how, that's the advice I'll give. Nice. I love that. Well, look, that's all I have for today. And I, I'm always say, I like to say, I enjoy myself and I always want to make sure the other person enjoyed themselves as well, too. I definitely enjoy myself, man. Thank you so much, Michael.